Thank God. How we feeling, Heat Nation? Whoa, hold on a second. How dare I come here, King? Actually, we gotta talk about you later, Jimmy, because you did a couple things that. <laughs> Listen, I told y'all in the last video on this channel, if you didn't watch it, go check it out right now, because I told y'all to get a grip, and if you have the guts, don't just come through the first door or, or run out of it. Whatever Pat Riley said, y'all know the quote. I told myself, if the Miami Heat can get a convincing win tonight, I'll feel a lot better about the team. Not that I was too concerned before, because like I said, I got the guts, but still, Boston has the top defense in the NBA, and they've won like 100 out of their last 105 games. Something crazy like that. Now, of course, I do have to mention the loss of Robert Williams. He, of course, tore his meniscus in his knee in their last game. And they said he's only going to be out like four to six weeks. And that was kind of surprising to me because I never heard of a meniscus tear, only keeping someone out for one to two months. And like I always say, I am a doctor. I did go to 15 years of med school, so I know what I'm talking about. But regardless, Robert Williams was a huge reason for the Boston Celtics' success of, of late, especially on the defensive end. So, of course, them losing him will be a big loss. But I do hope he can get better and can fully recover. But getting into the game, the first thing that I want to talk about... Okay, <laughs> hold on a second. I just got this message from my boy Russell over at the Miami Heat Discord. Uh, he's been begging for a Struce Daddy alert for months. And he knows we're going to get one tonight but I'll say that to the end. But shout out my boy Russell and all my boys over in the Miami Heat Discord. They are tagged in the description of every video on this channel, so make sure y'all go check them out. It's like the best heat community on the internet, so I highly recommend y'all click the link below and go join the family over there. So the first thing I wanna talk about today, you probably won't expect, but it's Duncan Robinson. He did the thing that quite literally probably is the thing that pisses me off the most in a basketball game. There was a play in the first half, Marcus Smart got a steal, hit ahead to Jason Tatum, and as soon as that happened, the second smart got that steal i saw duncan leaking out to get back on the defensive end and i said to myself i said duncan don't foul him don't get close to him give up the dunk last thing i want you to do is is, is rub your little shoulder blade on him and he gets the easy and one and sure enough duncan gets close gives him a little bump for no reason whatsoever tatum has a dunk foul and one to get an extra point because tatum hits the free throw god that frustrates me so much because if i can see that happening from quite literally a mile away well i guess it's not literally but if i can see that happen from literally four to five seconds before it happens then how do you not know that duncan how do you constantly foul guys like like if you gonna foul them foul them wrap them up don't let them go up don't let them get the easy layup or dunk i'm sure y'all have been watching basketball a long time you know exactly what i'm talking about just give up the easy dunk or if you want to play tough physical wrap them up just don't give up the extra point with a, a light little light little brush of the shoulder <sighs> okay i'm done Still love you though, Duncan. You're still my boy. The Heat really didn't have a good first half, and it seems like the Celtics hit absolutely everything, at least from three, specifically Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart, who played really, really well in that first half. But the Heat were up one at halftime. If I would have watched that game without looking at the score at all, I legit would have thought that he would have been down like 10 points. So the fact that they were actually up at halftime was unfathomable. The Heat had a strong third quarter going all the way up by 11 at one point. And then Jason Tatum drove to the basket, pushed off on Bam. They called a foul on Bam at a bow. Jason Tatum got two free throws. And that was a part of a 16-0 run by the Boston Celtics. The reason I bring that up is because Bam was begging Spo to call the foul. I was begging as well because the Celtics already had a couple buckets before that and that would have been a really, really big play to stop their momentum. Not only that, that was Bam's third foul. If they would have reviewed it, they probably would have flipped it to an offensive foul and instead it would have been Tatum's third foul. I feel like Spo doesn't manage his challenges very well. I think he's come out himself and said that he doesn't like the challenges because he didn't even end up using it at all today. So he could have saved two points and a foul on Bam if he would have just used it earlier, but he didn't. So that was a 16 nothing Boston run. But from there, it was pretty much back and forth between both teams. But now I want to talk about Jimmy Butler, specifically his shooting. And uh, this is talked about a lot, but I'm going to do it anyways because it really grinds my gears. So he took two early three-point attempts in the first game. The first one was okay. The second one was forced. But even then, I really don't like him shooting at all because his form is really bad right now. It seems like it's the worst it's been in a long time. He like kicks one leg out. It's a super line drive. I don't like him shooting at all. And then come late in the fourth quarter, he took another terrible contested three in the corner with like seven seconds left on the clock. He does that a lot, specifically in the fourth quarter. He loves taking these hero ball type threes when that's not your game and that frustrates me a lot and i know that frustrates most of heat nation as well but jimmy butler did get back to his game after that he started driving the ball and pulling up from his sweet spot which is in the mid-range and he had at least two to three really big mid-range jump shots in the fourth quarter to kind of keep the heat in the lead and i know jimmy made three threes last game tyler hero even had a quote that's saying don't look at jimmy's numbers trust me he could shoot 
which is like the ultimate, like, no, I'm not gonna trust you just cause you saying trust me, bro. I can see it with my own eyes. Jimmy cannot shoot threes. This is actually something we just talked about on yesterday's episode of the Heat vs. the World podcast. And I tell y'all all the time, that's one of the most fire Miami Heat podcasts out there. So if y'all not listening to it, what you doing? Your boy's on there almost every single week. So that'll be linked down below. Go show my boys over there and myself. Go show us some love over there. I know that's the second promo I've done this video and the guys from the Miami Heat Discord are telling me to shout out the Discord, man. I, I always do, man. It's always tagged in the description below. Below, but trust me y'all got your verbal shout out today a lot of cool heat content out there i love that they supporting me i love supporting them the heat community is really really awesome and i'm glad to be a part of it moving on from that though my biggest question at the start of the fourth quarter was really why was max Struess playing <laughs> instead of pj tucker i know pj hasn't played a lot of fourth quarters of late but the fact that tyler hero was out there and max Struess. That's what was a little concerning to me because they were both kind of getting attacked on defense pretty much throughout. I mean, I was going to say the game, but really the whole season. But damn, did he shut me up. Okay, listen, listen. I'm about to do something that I never thought I would do in my entire life. Now, offensively, Strews played okay at 14 points, 4 of 9 from 3. That's pretty good. But for his efforts on the defensive end in the fourth quarter, including a clutch strip, an absolutely amazing clutch block on Jalen Brown, and an amazing charge that he took in the fourth quarter, we would not have won this game without Max Strews. And that means we get a defensive Daddy! This is a Strews Daddy alert. Let's go! A defensive Struce Daddy alert. Anytime Max does something good, especially against the Celtics, because he's had a couple good games against Boston, I love showing this picture. Shout out Danny Age, but not really, because as Pat Riley told you, shut the f up and manage your own team. That's all I gotta say for this video though, man. But before we get out of here, I wanna shout out my favorite comment from the last recap video. This one is from my boy Will. Y'all know from the Wednesdays with Will, a series which will be back in the off season. But the main reason I wanna shout out my boy Will is because he is the captain of our men's adult basketball league team. We are now 1-0. Shout out to my homies on Team Blackout. I told you all about this in the last video. We'll be playing every Monday night for the next couple months. Last thing I want to promote, if y'all want to see the highlights from my basketball league. This music is copyrighted and I don't want to get a strike on my channel. I post them on my TikTok after every game. For the TikTok, just search Anthony Leonardo. It's also tagged in the description. I'm less than 300 followers away from 1,000, so I'm trying to grow that too. We play Purtle on there every day. We play Weddle, which is the NFL Purtle. We do all kinds of drafts and all kinds of kinds of stupid things over there so i'm trying to get to a thousand i'll also post my basketball highlights so if y'all want to see those go follow the tiktok maybe when the season's over i'll do like a season long hoop mixtape and post it on this channel uh but we'll see if i keep getting buckets because the first game was pretty good for all of us but i did too much promo this video so i'm not gonna tell you to sub i'm not gonna tell you to like but if you didn't like the video go ahead and dislike comment below and tell me that i suck but if not i'll see y'all later except maybe not though because i actually have a really busy weekend so i don't know if i'll be able to get a, a recap up about the bulls game or the raptors game i definitely want to the Raptors game because the Raptors fans hate me and I get a ton of views because of it. Shout out to the Raptors fans. I love y'all, man. I lied when I said last promo because I also did a video earlier this year where I reacted to Toronto Raptors fans hate comments. It's really funny, so make sure y'all go check that out too. But I'll see y'all later. Some some fun. Pull up in the city trying to get that dead fast. Like, do it on my own. I don't need no dead weight. Like, had to kill them off. Yeah, I need a head space. You know this homegrown bitch don't a fan, man. Hmm.